Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> can, can you repeat that? Because I actually said I mean, I'm <laughs> I said I was going to be the best man at his wedding and get drunk. Smash his cake with an elbow drop. And that would be on the I thought you said you were going to be the best man at his wedding and then do something with his wife's cake. What? I was like, wow, you trifle. Yeah, that's 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 oh, terrible. Man, brave when you're on the internet. Yeah, that, that's that's terrible. Yeah. How, how are you guys doing today? Man, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, it sounds like it. I can hear the enthusiasm. That's <laughs> man. Com- com- you see the fights last night? Yeah. I did, and I watched, I watched Keith Thurman fight. I'm just going to be honest. I ain't watch. <laughs> I watched boxing. I was watching boxing. I'm not. I wish I had watched boxing. Yeah, you should have. I should have. Uh, that fight night with Strickland completely put me to sleep. Whatever happened in that main event, I I don't know. I mean, a jab happened. I mean, it was a nice jab. It was, um, yeah. it, it, it was a beautiful jab. I'm just, I just say that. It was a beautiful jab, I mean, for what it's worth. And he were, he... Your man has got a headache today. Uh, all right. <laughs> You're not convinced? Okay. <laughs> um. Here's the thing. Um. I wasn't wild. I'll be completely honest with you. Um. From what little bit I saw, eh, yeah, it was a nice jab, but every jab looks nice when you're going up against someone that can't strike for shit. Yeah. I, I literally had more fun whenever there was a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found myself rooting for commercials. I was like, oh, shit. Man, hair plugs. Fuck yeah. Oh, man, dick pills. Fuck yeah. Venom kits. Hell yeah. Oh, it's back on again. I just don't understand how you can go from, yeah, um, Holland, if me and you were to ever meet up in prison, I would fucking rape you. I'm going to kill everybody. I'm a fucking murderer, and I want everyone to die, and I'll fucking burn this motherfucker down. To just pop in the world's famous jab <laughs> for an entire fight. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe maybe it was just delicious of me. I guess I expected the rape. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe I set maybe, maybe I set my my expectations way too high. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, yeah, maybe. If if that if that's the fight that I'm supposed to look forward to for for Adesanya, I'm good. I'm good. I enjoy Eagle FC better than better than I did that. I'm be honest. I enjoyed wiping my ass after a shit than I did then. <laughs> fucking main event sucked. I'll fucking say it. That main event was dog shit. I think I had more fun watching my dog take a shit when I took him out. That goddamn main and, event was, and, was a, just a piss break. And what's his name? Trey Sean Gore. You know what? I, I, don't, you, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. Boo! There you go. The whole fight. Oh, man. Trajan Gore, he hits so hard. He hits so hard. He's so powerful. He hits so hard. Mm. I mean, yeah, but you have to throw punches and and you have to throw, you know, you gotta let your hands go. Yeah. You can't sit there and walk walk into. Uh, I don't know what those kicks were. I'm not gonna say they were teeps. They were, they yeah, were they were. Ah, uh, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's about that. I want this chance. To show you that your garden karate is so much nonsense. And that's quite easy to do. I know Kung Fu. Show me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another exciting edition of H8L Proudly Fucking Presents, the Fist Fights and Fried Rice Podcast. I am your host, Taz, and as always, I have brought with me an eclectic group of assholes to fill your ear holes with some sweet, sweet, sweet vernacular that you just can't find anywhere else. First up, a man that truly needs no introduction, rolling 15 inches deep, the Destroyer. 
of ovaries. The man who was hung like a goddamn silverback, knocking at the fucking knees, who still stands by his assessment that women's self-defense is absolute trash. He was born for this, and he will give you a mouthful. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly, and I mean proudly, present Lobo. I was born ready, Taz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have something special for you. All the way from across the pond, the son of Sydney, the pride of Australia. He is the frisky ding. He is the one, the only, and I mean the one and only, because no one else on this show has quite the accent that this man has. Gentlemen, be prepared to lose your bitches. Ladies, be prepared to drop your men, because this man is about to blow your minds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Frisky Dingo himself, the one, the only, Dildo Swaggins 69. Welcome to the show. This is where you say something. This is where you say something, motherfucker. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just sitting there laughing my ass off. <laughs> Damn it. Continue, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we'll work on that as the episodes go on. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, no episode of Fist Fights and Pride Rise is ever complete without the maestro of martial arts, the connoisseur of combat sports, the rain man of everything martial arts related. We proudly bring to you the black man from Dagestan, the one, the own justice. Yes, he's a magnificent. Vegans are not us. Like, <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm still waiting for that proof in regards to my argument about I have yet to meet a skinny. I mean, what did define skinny vegan? Because it sounds like you're body shaming right now. Are you body I'm, shaming? I'm not body shaming at all. I just find it kind it of fucking like odd that shaming. a lot of the ve- the quote unquote vegans that I that I've met, eh, their waistlines aren't too far from mine. That's all I'm saying. Again, what kind of vegans are they? Okay. Justice, I didn't if, realize you were a millennial. If you want to go there, then I'll be happy to take it there. Some of you ethnic vegans <laughs> are quite round in the midsection. And again, like I said last week, I tried a vegan cookie, and that shit was straight fucking sugar. That was goddamn diabetes in every bite. I felt like my heart stopped. Depending on where you went, probably. But again, we have to, you know. Again, just because we're vegan doesn't mean we don't eat, and we don't eat good. You have to eat at the good places first. You have to find somebody that can cook to cook your vegan meal. That's just what it is. Damn fat as shit vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking vegans. You know fat what? Fat shit. Mate, I do have questions about veganism. What do you eat? What are you allowed to eat? What are you not allowed to eat? What did you have for dinner tonight? So, I had something plant-based. <laughs> So we can we don't eat dairy we don't eat we don't eat um anything animal related any animal byproducts um right now i haven't eaten anything since earlier today but um earlier i had like this plant-based burrito made by alpha foods so it was i was in a rush and i was at work all day so no no when you go to like you see those Restaurants now are having those like plant based burgers. What are they made out of? That's vegan. This is for vegans, right? Yeah. So they're plant based. It just, it depends on which one it is. Some of them are made out of pea protein, isolates, like beyond. Some of them have all kind of shit in them, like impossible. You, you want to stay away from not throwing shots, but yeah, I am. And, <laughs> and, um, you have a couple of other brands that are pretty decent as well. Uh, some of them have a, like a bunch of soy in it. Be honest, they're not. They are not the best for you, but it's not a cheeseburger. Oh, so, shots fired against cheeseburgers! I, I see. think I'm gonna stick with the cheeseburger. Mm. Yeah, you stick with the cheeseburger. Mm. Remember, you remember when Uncle Phil was eating that cheeseburger and he had that that stroke, heart attack. Yeah, but he didn't die until like, he went vegan. That's not the point, though. Point. I'm just saying, you know, Heavy D didn't die until after he dropped a bunch of weight. Wow. Yeah, I went there. Yeah, I went there. Yeah. While we're at it, <clears throat> while we're at it, Justice, why don't you be so kind after this next segment to let us know what vegan shit we're actually eating? On a cheesy. Hmm. 
What are we eating? All right. So if you want to try some really good vegan food, go down to Greenville, South Carolina, which is like an hour away from Charlotte. And there's a place called Naked Vegan. Huh? Naked Vegan. Naked Vegan. Naked Vegan. Naked Vegan. Naked that's, vegan? The name, that's the name of the restaurant. Like, like for real? Like for real. It's called the Naked Vegan. I mean, I guess it's based on... Is it based on nudity? You know, yeah. They have a a sandwich called the Coochie Cat. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the Coochie Cat, huh? They got some. They got some dick burgers, huh? huh? Some nothing no, but nut have, fries, huh? They got the uh, it's called the trick something chicken sandwich. And then they got like all the names are based on like sexual stuff, good stuff, yeah. I'm I'm curious. Are you recommending this place because of the food, or because you're some type of perv? A little bit of both. You know, I respect that. I respect that. Frisky Dingo, you ever ate anything vegan? Not that I'm aware of. I know very little about veganism. Out of curiosity, is uh, is is vegan in that type of shit? Is that is that big in Australia? No, it's not big. Um, but I think everywhere around the world is starting to get bigger because you know everyone jumps on. Trends and fads. So, yeah, I, no, I have. I, I will say it's not popular. I need you to do me a favor, Frisky Dingo. I need you to tell our listeners the same bomb you dropped on me in regards to Foster's beer and Outback Steakhouse. Okay. So, <laughs> Foster's. If anyone, if you've ever had a Foster's, you'll see very specifically on the can it says "brewed in the U.S." <laughs> it has nothing to do with Australia. Nothing. Not even sold in Australia. And when it comes to Outback, the other day, I'll explain Outback. So the other day was Australia, January the 26th. And I went to Outback Steakhouse because the only thing that's relatively you know, Australian around. I walked in that place. There was not even a banner saying Happy Australia. No specials, no nothing. I was so pissed. <laughs> so pissed. It's, that's just like... American going to Australia and you go to an American themed restaurant and they don't celebrate the fourth of July. So you you were heartbroken oh, that uh, Outback State or Outback, oh, Outback. that <laughs> Outback Steakhouse didn't have any fucking food or anything for celebration in regards to Australia Day. No. I was I was very, very disappointed. Very heartbroken. What the hell is Australia Day by the way? So Australia Day is the day where the first fleet so there were ships that came to Australia with all the naughty white people on them, all the convicts. And they. And this is the day where they planted the flag and raised the British flag and named this place the British Empire. Australia. Thumbs it up. I thought Australia was founded by criminals. Yeah, they're all convicts. No, all criminals. Are you a descendant of Ned Kelly? I wish I was, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck is Ned Kelly, by the way? He is a. Very criminal, basically. Have you ever seen that guy? Have you ever seen the movie Ned Kelly? I don't even fucking heard of Ned Kelly. <laughs> so he was a criminal. And he robbed banks and robbed train carts. He dressed it up. He dressed up in a big suit of armor. And no matter how many times he was shot by police, they couldn't kill him until finally they killed him. Justice, you're awfully quiet, sir. I don't. I can't hear you at all. Well, I, I didn't say anything yet. I'm still feeling disrespected about the vegan comment. Because yeah. vegans fucking suck, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I don't know how else to put it. I, I, I try to be understanding. I, I do. I'm trying to be understanding, and I'm trying to get it, and, I, and I'm trying to see it from your point of view, like on how you could just turn your back on delicious meat, no homo. And um, it just doesn't quite make sense to me. But then when we have our... You know, our Australian affiliate on the line, I figured, okay, maybe I'm just wrong. And maybe other places in the world have too jumped on this bandwagon of pussification, but only to find out, no, not really. It's just apparently only fat vegans are here. Yeah. Wow. So fat. Okay. I mean. Okay. I mean. <laughs> I mean okay. I mean, you're loved, though. You know, you're loved. What more could you possibly want? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm good in my skin. You know, I'm being fat shamed and discriminated against because I'm a vegan. So if any vegans hear this, 
I need you to comment, subscribe, and like and share. Do you actually support your vegan brother? Do you do you actually feel uh, attacked in regards to my, my my comments about you being a soft vegan? Shh, listener. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of figured that, but I just I just wanted to know for sure, so I knew exactly what soundbite to play. <laughs> 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 you know that that's what it ultimately comes down to i i, I want to make sure that i am doing the needful to play the proper soundbite for your feelings because you know this may come as a shock to you i care sir i care mm. i do because when i just go on my rants or i start insulting people or insulting religious beliefs or or lifestyles i need everyone to know that it comes from a place of love I am full of Christ's love. Are you? Oh, dude. All, all I'm time. fine. I'm okay. You're, you're good? I, I'm good. All I'm right. good. Then this makes me feel... Oh. Nerd. You're nerd. a fucking nerd. Nerd. You're a fucking nerd. And nerd. no one likes you. Point no stuff. one likes you. Ah, uh, yes. Well, yeah, like I do karate. Or I fight in karate combat. Those nerds. I was wondering what was going to be our segue, and you found it, sir. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Leading right into today's topic. Gentlemen, this gives me a great to have you individuals on this episode so I can hear everyone's opinions and views in regards to karate combat. Allow me to be the first to say, when karate combat first came about, I was one of the first ones to root for this shit. I remember this. I remember this clearly. I thought that uh, this was going to be a great avenue for different forms of karate, different systems of karate to come together and be what the early UFC was to determine which style or system was strongest. Man, we fast forward a handful of years and, you know, <laughs> I was fucking wrong. This, ah, uh, no, nope, that was not the platform for that at all. What we have now are old and fading celebrity uh, i guess you can call them appearances from that of like danny trejo who will do just about anything for check right about now and um some of the world's most sad and pathetic computer animation showcasing fighters walking out of the shadow realm or nether realm to fight each other in a pit that has been um imitated and copied and taken from other combat related sports so you know what i'm going to start with our newest member Frisky Dingo, would you be a so kind? Let us know from what little bit that you've seen. What are your thoughts on karate combat? I thought it was rubbish. Short, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet, to the point. Um, it's short, sweet. Yeah, exactly. I I couldn't and like like you mentioned before those fighters walking from the nether realm. I I was just speechless about how bad it was. I, I admit there's, there's been some enjoyable, you know, fights. I enjoy a good spin kick knockout here and there, but I just don't see this taking off. I, I just, I don't see this being the answer to what is needed to get karate back to the, the main state that it was back in the day. Just me personally. Lobo, your thoughts on karate combat, sir? Like you initially, I loved it. I thought it was a really cool idea. But, uh, it doesn't seem like there's anybody other than Shotokan guys. Huh? No, don't, don't even, no, I'm, I'm going to hold that for a moment, but don't you get me started on that shit. But I'm glad you brought that up. Justice, your thoughts on karate combat, sir? Eric Salmon, you're saying you can't fight for shit. Damn, we, we're just, <laughs> Fuck we're just, you. We're just, we're just going Joke. right in, huh? <laughs> Podcast video, videos and shit, you lost that fight. And karate combat, y'all owe us a fight. It's bullshit with leg kicks. Fuck you. Oh, I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Yeah, I, you know what? I second all of that. Uh, fuck Eric Samuelson. Um, I, I enjoyed those 30-second videos of him, like, you know, slamming a 50-pound bag and doing tornado kicks and, and punching really fast. And I, I enjoyed those 30-second clips. And, you know, props to him for being able to turn that into something. Um, There's my rant on that. In regards to karate combat, dude, fuck, man. I expected more. I expected a lot more. When Karate Combat first came out, I genuinely thought it was going to be Styles versus Styles. Where the fuck are the other full-contact styles? 
Where's the Kyokushin? Where's the the Kudo? Where 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 hell? Where's the fucking Taekwondo? Where is the style versus style? What I'm getting is a bunch of motherfuckers claiming to be Shotokan, just putting on some fucking tracksuit pants, and damn near doing MMA fucking double legs. Oh, because they MMA fighters. <laughs> yeah. Ex- excuse you. They are MMA fighters. That's why they're doing MMA dub- double legs. <laughs> that was perfect. Get the fuck out of here. You mean to tell me this this league, if you will, this this organization that has promised to bring karate to the masses is just recruiting MMA fighters? Yes, unfortunately. So you mean to tell me that? My want and need to see other full contact styles, such as Kyokushin or whatnot, versus Shotokan or, or Shotokan versus uh, Sidokan or Sidokan versus what do you? You mean to tell me that that's 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 not going to happen? Oh, it's not going to happen. Because you have people like Edgar Scrivers, who's an MMA fighter, does have a background in karate. He fought MMA first. So guess what kind of fighter you are? You're an MMA fighter. All right, well, let me ask you guys this. With that being said, for the most part, I think we're all pretty pretty well-versed or at least knowledgeable combat-related sports in some kind of way. So let me ask you guys this. Um, you guys see this being a viable alternative to K1? Do you even see this as a viable alternative to the days of fucking WKA and, and PKA kickboxing that you should be able to watch on ESPN? With the karate motherfuckers wearing the little, the little foam booty foot protectors. No, how how can you? I mean, you're fighting MMA fighters all day. I I don't want to see some guy that trains with Joe Saint Pierre up at TriStar in the damn karate gi, who hasn't did any karate since he was damn ten years old. So my he's in karate combat. I want to see Frank from down the street who's been fighting in Kyoku Shin tournaments the last five years. I want to see him. I want to see Gene something something from France who's been on karate in the Olympics and shit like that for all his damn life. I don't want to see damn Gabriel Varga or Gabriel Varga, what the fuck his name is. <laughs> like, and, and he's a cool guy, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I got nothing bad to say about him as a fighter, but Not shit, no. I don't want to see him in a damn... Yeah, I don't want to see him fighting a bunch of karate guys. You fought MMA and you were a glory world champion and other kickboxing world champions. What the hell are you doing in there? Ah, somebody else a chance. I could not. And that is one of the many issues that I have with karate combat. Again, like I said in the beginning, dude, I wanted this shit to be successful. I wanted this shit to be big. I wanted this to blow up. I genuinely thought this was going to be the karate version of what like, fucking UFC one style versus style. But like you said, it's just a bunch of MMA cats doing MMA shit under the guise of karate. And with that being said, I don't see how this could ever be what the old school kickboxing back of the day was, or even K1. Fuck, dude, I, th- this isn't even this isn't even a fucking glory. I can't picture this shit taking off outside of Fight Pass and fucking YouTube. Who who's clamoring to put Karate Combat on their platforms? Paramount. <laughs> does Paramount are they really? Is Paramount even taking it? Yeah, Paramount has a exclusive deal. Yeah, with him. Yeah, Paramount needs That's content. Cool. Is, okay. is that who I see in the chat? Was that the one and only Deku? Yeah, what's going on, guys? You know what I'm saying? Fucking doo-doo balls, Hershey <laughs> squirts, fucking... It's been a long time, you know. I'm back to just shit on you niggas, you know. <laughs> what's up? What's good? All right, cool. You know, whenever he remembers how to get his mic to work, he'll, uh, he'll chime in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I just I I don't see it, and I don't I don't see any stars being made from this. Problem with all the MMA fighters, I mean, this whole you now we talked about it with bare knuckle. We talked about it, you know, with now you got these MMA fighters want to box, and now and you can't even nobody even does karate anymore like that. You can't even do karate without MMA fighters trying to jump in. Like damn, like what's going on? Or now you have karate having to adapt to. MMA related rule sets just to get people to watch 
When have there been double leg okay. takedowns and ground and pound in karate? I'm confused about that. But you, no. you can't do. You can't leg kick. You can kick to That's the calf. Can, no, you can't. No, you can kick to the cat. You can do a calf kick. Anything below the below the uh, knee. Oh. And and you can't kick anything. And then you have to kick above the waist. So below anywhere between the knee and the hip, you can't kick. It's stupid. I didn't even know that. Yeah, actually, I didn't know that about the the rule set at all in regards to the the fucking between the hip and the knee. You can't kick. I, you know what? It's funny. I just figured that those fighters that they brought in just didn't know anything about leg kicks. I actually didn't know you couldn't kick the legs. Oh, is that one guy? Uh, shit, I follow him on Instagram. Max Maximus something. He stays in Thailand. Actually, trains Muay Thai, but. Uh, he has he does have a karate background. Like he train trains with a bunch of monks over there, some kind of crazy stuff. Long story short, he threw a leg kick in like twice and almost got his ass disqualified. That's a goddamn shame. Frisky Dingo is karate big in Australia? Um, no, no, karate's not big. I tell you what is taking off though. Just MMA in general is really taking off. We got a lot of fighters coming out now. I mean, obviously Robert Whittaker has been around. Volvanovsky, I know he's a world champion now. So it's starting to get bigger and bigger. But in terms of karate, no. Taekwondo, no. Huh. Didn't know that. I actually thought Taekwondo would be fucking huge in Australia. <laughs> karate would be huge. Yeah, it seems like, well, kickboxing is starting to take off. Oh, definitely. It's, that's got to nope. be taken off over there. Yeah, Eric Samuelson, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Doodoo balls. <laughs> Hershey squirts. Can't fight, and I seen him fight. Then and he lost, and they gave him the fight. And then he got on Instagram like, according to the rule set, I won the fight. So oh, you got your ass whooped. So you're still bothered about that, I see. I am still bothered by that, <laughs> folks. Uh, no, he's been talking about this for weeks. I was anticipating that fight. He was, folks. He really was. I don't know why. This I don't, I don't know fight. what you thought you were going to get from that. I, listen, I was like, man, this is the fight that could put Karate Combat on. I was like, you got a YouTuber who could, really po- who could possibly fight against a legit karate fighter. Wait, so whoa, like, oh. wait, 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 wait. I just caught what the fuck you said. You thought Eric Samuelson was going to be the one to put Karate Combat on. I thought it was going to be something. I thought it was going to be entertaining. You thought he was going to give the, the Jake Paul treatment? Get the fuck out of here. I thought it was gonna be entertaining. <laughs> that should have been an entertaining fight. You're smoking dick. Get the man, get the fuck. What? <laughs> well, I understand now. That's why I said he's trash. Wait, hang on. Back that shit up. You thought this motherfucker, Mister Thirty Second Clips of weird twiddly do spinning shit and and throwing fifty pound sandbags, that was gonna be the guy to ignite karate combat. I did. Really? I thought I was like, man, this is gonna bring some attention. What? Yeah, I wasn't the only one. Adam Kovac, he thought the same thing. That's why he he sounded his ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what I mean, the fuck? obviously the guy he doesn't have a karate background. He does. He's a Taekwondo black belt, which anybody can get a black belt in Taekwondo. Uh, it's, it's soft and shit. But long story short, um, <laughs> people. I mean, I wasn't the only one. This was supposed this was, this was supposed to be you know all eyes on and it ended up being voodoo. It was straight dog shit, absolute dog shit. His fight was dog shit. His introduction was dog shit. Karate combat's dog shit, and I really wanted them to succeed. I wanted them to be the fucking end all and be all. I I honestly wanted karate combat to be the new K1. And yeah, you're right. It's probably wishful fucking thinking on my part, but I really really wanted them. To be that something that, as a cat from a, with with a with a former karate background, could fucking gravitate to, and what I got was bullshit, absolute bullshit. The special effects where these motherfuckers are walking out of the shadow realm to to climb into the pit. What? Why? And the and the, the the sad ass parkour moves off the little ramp. Why? Why? You know what it reminds me of? I think Triller kind of does the same thing. You remember? What was that movie with Roddy Piper and the uh, Patu Kid wrestling and rock and roll shit? <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, man, I don't know what you're talking about, but I can't think of the title. Shit, what's the name of that damn movie? Long story short, it's an old-ass movie for you young people. Long ass, long story short, music, CGI, that shit, and, and real fighting, that shit does not mix. Was it Arena? No, oh, hell no. No, sir. That was the first movie that came to mind. Body Slam. There you go, Body Slam. All right, so let me ask you guys this. Yeah. With, with you guys looking, from what you've seen of karate combat, does this shit make you want to put your fucking kids in karate? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, not really, no. Hell no. You would bypass this shit and go right to a fucking MMA school. Or I'll tell you what does make me want to put my kids in karate was the old school Sabaki Challenge videos. Amen to that. To me, I find it sad when that Paul Mitchell ISKA ballerina karate shit is more entertaining than karate combat. It's a sad, sad day for karate. I, I don't know what they could do to honestly be bigger than, than where they are now. Like I, I don't I don't know if this is the the ceiling for them, but I mean it, it's clear that Karate Combat can never become what K one was. What is the point of the fucking green screen? Like what 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 is that supposed to convey? Well, now they're fighting in a mystical temple or but why on a volcano like, 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 video game? But why? What is that? Is that is that for fucking is that for the nerds that are just sitting at home on their fucking computer? Like oh man, I wanna I wanna go fight Princess Katara and fucking Nether Realm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess it is because it's like it's well I mean it looks like a video game setup. Wait, what would you say, Frisky Dingo? It's gotta be. It's gotta be for the nerds. Because initially they were just in a warehouse. Dude, you remember the the early events where they were like in a fucking parking garage and they had like set up the the pit temple and they had the car. I think we even commented this on our karate episode where we thought it was cool because they were imitating fucking uh what was that Van Damme for like Lionheart. I yeah, are, yeah. That shit made that 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 made it look kind of cool. They're just sitting in a parking deck. There's cars around. Motherfuckers are sitting on top of the cars. It, it looked like people were gambling on niggas doing karate. That shit to me was cool, and I I, I thought that's what was gonna you know really kind of put them on and then you know kind of separate themselves from everybody else. Man, this this computer animated bullshit. I I don't I don't know what to make of this. I mean, maybe they try to make it a little bit more urban. I think, you know, with the popularity of people that use karate, I mean, you got people like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, you still got people like GSP, Leota Machida, even got Machida, and then you got. Oh, yeah, I mean. Through the history of fighting, I think two things make you know organizations: how you will obviously people are fighting, how good they are, the product that they sell, and also the trash talking goes on. I don't see any of that with this. So in terms of that, I just don't think this is going to go anywhere. Welcome to the show, sir. You fucking get, it. you fucking get it. And you're right. There, there is nothing. To me, there is nothing that would make me want to buy tickets to sit through and watch this shit there's nobody to me that can sell a fight at all for karate combat they even sell tickets uh that's a good question i'll ask the rain man justice they sell tickets for the shit i think they're like special i think they're doing like some tickets and special invites okay they need to do away with that because like how are you making money off of this they have a bunch of really rich investors uh, Adam Kovacs. Adam, what's his name? Adam Kovacs? Who fucking loaded, man. Are they also sponsored by Bitcoin still? Man, they got a bunch of different sponsors. Yeah, they, they do got a bunch of sponsors. Loaded, bro. My I, thing is, just have it in a pit and some type of, like, arena, and you get more fans. I Granted, they got a lot of investors. That's cool, but that's not. that's just nothing to me. Or whatever, you ain't playing <laughs> arena full of fans. You're not gonna really get over to a, any crowd. To me, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see this ever drawing the type of crowds that the old school karate circuit or the kickboxing circuit from back in the day used to draw. I doubt we're gonna see the equivalent of like a bad Brad or a fucking um. Oh man, who's that cat that destroyed that one dude? Uh, Master Blaster. We're we're, we're not going to see cats like that. Not in this. Nope. What, what, I guess what's the goal? Because again, 
if you're not inviting all styles, what are you doing? Exactly. That's true. You know, that's true. I, I figured with a name like Karate Combat, I assumed it was going to be style versus style. With a name like Karate Combat, honestly, I expected to see style versus style. <laughs> fucking uh, board breaking demonstrations or motherfuckers kicking through glaciers. Um, you know, the, the kind of shit that karate is known for feats and tests of strength. Yeah, like Sabaki Challenge. Yeah, exactly. The Sabaki Challenge or the fucking, um, you know, 100 man Kumite, shit like that. Hell, dude, I would even honestly settle for some just Kyokushin style knockdown shit. Put two motherfuckers in full geese in the pit. Let them do fucking rolling thunders and, and tornado kicks. I'll pay for that. Yeah, that'd be cool shit. Okay, yeah. But this fucking Adidas sports pant with no sponsors or shit on it, with your little karate belt and your 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 hybrid MMA gloves, eh, I'm not feeling it. But you give me the fucking <clears throat> gi on gi bullshit where motherfuckers are repping their style, repping their art, you know, doing the karate bows, walk into that pit. Hands are what wrapped up with like tape just around the knuckles. You know, I don't even give a shit if they can't punch in the face. I'll pay money for that shit long before I would karate combat. Yeah, because that's still entertaining. Yeah, because motherfuckers aren't going to run around. They're going to stand right in the center of that pit and they're going to beat the fuck out of each other until somebody falls over. I'm not crazy about that. I'm going to use the the wall to try to jump off and do a Showtime Pettis kick. That's fucking corny. The little parkour shit. That's that's lame as fuck. Like I watch that and I'm like, okay, this is this is adorable for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, I think um and again, I guess it goes back to you know, what what's the idea behind it cuz are you trying to make cuz no, I'm not going to try to play with words. Mm. There's a difference between a sport and combat sport. Agreed. Karate in the Olympics is a Kickboxing is a combat sport. MMA is a combat sport. Boxing is a combat sport. Like these things, like what? You, I mean, these are not Olympic style rules. What are you doing? I, I want to say they're trying to bridge the gap for karate fighters who want that MMA style experience, which is why they allow X amount of seconds on the ground to work your fucking ground and pound. But I, eh, I. Once you watch one or two of those, what 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 else is there? Yeah. You know, at least with MMA, there's a plethora of things that could potentially happen. A motherfucker could get their arm snapped off and shoved up their ass. A person could be choked, goddamn lifeless, knocked dick down in the fucking dirt. He'll kicked in the next fucking week. You know, someone could pull off the fucking you know debut of a lifetime by hitting some type of hurricane kick or just completely blitzing a person with strikes or the submission of the year anything could happen karate combat somebody's going to get calf kicked and maybe they might get kicked in the face or you might run into a reverse punch that's about it yeah so let me ask you a question and i uh, said some said something about this before Hmm. i made a joke about it but since i know since we live in north america and in the west I mean, how serious do we take karate for real? Because we hot, red-blooded Americans, you know, rise for pussies. Kicking and shit, we got guns, and we do MMA, we wrestle. <laughs> 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 we box. <laughs> and we, sh- we shoot your ass. We blow shit up. We spit tobacco and ride horses and shit. We do manly yeah. shit. Okay, you're describing my weekend, so we go. <laughs> we do hang so shit rock. fucking men over here in the West. You know, we that's, do, do we take a- that's a good question. I mean, it, it's it's pretty much known that Taekwondo is the most practiced martial art in the fucking world for whatever reason. But you, you pose a really good question in regards to karate. Us as Americans, do we still take karate seriously and i can't speak for every american obviously but honestly i don't think it holds the same aura that it used to i think that because of the mcdojo and the fly-by-night you know over the phone certification bullshits I, i think that karate has been so watered down and so just oh shit what else is a good term other than watered down It's been made into such a joke that it's almost laughable to put somebody in karate or even to take karate. 
you know, there used to be a time where it's like, yeah, I'm a black belt. Oh, shit, nigga, watch out. You might get fucked up. Now, if you're like, I'm a black belt, the fuck out the way. Oh, sorry. No, no, no one gives a shit anymore. It doesn't hold the same aura that it used to have. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Like, realistically, if a dude walks into the gym and they're like, yeah, I'm a fucking black belt, or a fucking Timmy O'Toole walks in, yeah, I've been training in MMA for six months, I'm probably getting the fuck out of Timmy's way. My next question is, karate combat is supposed to bring out karate people. Because we saw, like, during the early 90s with K-1, you had Francisco Fijo, you mm-hmm. had um, Andy Hood, you Fiesto. had these guys that... Yeah, yeah, you had these guys who were karate, who did karate, who you know did it all their life. And when K one came about, Sato Kakan, you know they started these events. Who let's go ahead and train, train some kickboxing and uh, put some boxing gloves on. Let's start killing people, axe kicks and spinning heel kicks to the thighs, things like that. That you know, and I guess that's what I'm trying to say is like, well. They were taking it serious enough, like people, karate practitioners, you know, when you go west, but then when you come east to America, we're just like, we got some bullshit over here. So, I mean, why would you do karate combat? Why would you do WCL, uh, World Combat League, Chuck Norris shit? Hey, when you hey, got hey, fucking hey, UFC? hey, fuck you. World Combat League was amazing. It was. World Combat League is what. Karate Combat wishes it could be. World Combat League didn't need Fight Pass. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? World Combat yeah. League was able to secure its own mainstream channel. Hell, World Combat League came on after fucking WEC. The difference between World Combat League and this bullshit is you had different styles. Everyone on those teams fought differently. You had your Wonder Boy Thompsons, you had your Raymond Daniels. You had a lot of cats that brought a lot of different looks, a lot of different techniques, a lot of different ways to fuck a person up. Most yeah. of them dudes, karate backgrounds, taekwondo background, sport karate, full contact karate, you name it. What you didn't really have is a whole team full of MMA robots, punch, punch, kick, double leg. You didn't really have that. It was not uncommon to see the wrong motherfucker get their head knocked straight through their ass in World Combat League. But most importantly, World Combat League never shied away from its roots. You had guys like Chuck Norris, Richard Norton, Pat Johnson. You had a slew of karate motherfuckers. Even when they brought in Pat Smith in that, what was it, like the second season or third season, they brought in Pat Smith. Yeah, he was he was, he was famous for what he did in the early UFCs, but he had a karate and kickboxing background. Man, did he? Shit. Man, what? Well, you see that response that you're giving right there? You're giving a legit response in regards to, man, th- this is what karate and kickboxing was about. D- do you do you give that same response for Eric Samuelson? No. Hell no. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from the, the guys or girls that fight in karate combat. I'm sure they'd all whoop my fucking ass. But with that being said, I don't I don't I don't look at any of them like how I did like a Pat Smith or a Wonder Boy Thompson or a Raymond fucking Daniels. If world not world, but if karate combat wants to get to the level of a World Combat League or a Glory or a K one or the fucking kickboxing scene or the, the, the karate scene of the sixties, seventies and eighties they need stars and and not just not just guys that can just talk a, a good amount of shit but a group of guys and girls that can talk a good amount of shit sell a fight back it up and make you want to watch you know my, myself justice you know lobo to a lesser extent e- even even deku we grew up in a time and an age where selling a fight was everything everything what made boxing so great in the fucking 60s 70s and 80s was motherfuckers that not only could walk the walk and talk the talk. If they set a road, they were going to fucking walk it. And that was amazing. We don't have that now. I, I, I look at karate combat. I'm literally watching motherfuckers walk through green screen from fucking Netherrealm. That, that, oh, what? No. 
when you when you watched a, a Dennis Alexio from back in the day do his shadow boxing and talk his shit before a fight, yeah, I'm the baddest man on the fucking planet. If you step foot, you know, in the ring with me, I'm gonna knock your fucking head clean off. Okay, damn, shit. And then you tune into ESPN or ABC Sports or whatever the fuck shit channel that would come on, and you see Dennis Alexio kick a motherfucker to death. Hell, even the point karate days of Chuck Norris and Joe Lewis. They had the little foam, little hand pads and the little, the little karate booty things on, on their feet. But the fights were still entertaining. They were entertaining. Bill Wallace and all them cats, all these dudes, they knew how to get people to watch. And that's why that shit was mainstream. They didn't have to rely on, on gimmicks and, and, and corny special effects. They didn't have to rely on parlor tricks. Karate combat, to me, in my opinion, is the poor man's and I mean absolute poor man's point karate scene. It's sad. Why don't why don't why don't you guys have cats like Raymond Daniels repping your shit, Wonder Boy Thompson repping your shit? Why aren't you reaching out to these guys? I mean, I don't I don't know for sure if they're not, but why aren't you reaching out to these cats that have made it to the upper echelon of combat sports and get them to rep your shit? Because that's what's needed. Yes. People I'm tired forget. of seeing Wonder Boy get wrestle fuck. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 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 damn. I mean, you're not wrong, but damn. <laughs> People forget when the early UFCs came out, especially the, hell, UFC 1, had Don the fucking Dragon Wilson on commentary. Don Wilson didn't know shit about MMA, but he had that kickboxing pedigree. So when he fucking talked about kicks and shit, people listened. He, he sounded stupid when, when people were like, oh, it's to the ground. And what I would do is, mm, yes. <laughs> mm, back to you, Jim. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but at least he had the kickboxing pedigree to fall back on. I listen to these commentators talk at world at uh, fucking karate combat and fuck, man, yeah, boss still telling them same dad jokes like, uh, eh. <laughs> eh. and that's great. They got GSP to be you know an ambassador and. And that's cool, listening to Boss Rootin and GSP talk about what got them into karate. But how, how many how many events or episodes are you going to do that on before you just stop giving a shit? And as far as I'm concerned, I honestly don't think having GSP or Boss Rootin has done anything for Karate Combat's notoriety. Uh, it hasn't because, I mean, to be honest, when have you seen GSP do them? I mean, you saw, saw some techniques, but have you seen him do karate? Hell no. Haven't. Hell no. Have you seen, you know, boss do any karate? You ever seen any of that? Uh, outside of Fight Pass or apparently Paramount or whatever, I, I just, I, I don't see this going any further than where it's at now. I don't see any stars. I don't see any any breakout talent that's really just, honestly, I, I don't I don't think it's going to, I just don't think it's going to set the world on fire. I think it's fucking Breakout toast. talent, you got Gab Gabriel Varga? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's can, a champion. I was gonna say, can can you say that he's somebody of of, of notoriety because of karate combat? Right. Hey, who's the UFC heavyweight champion of the world? Uh, Francis Ngannou. What about light heavyweight champion? To John Jones. Right. Uh, what, what about um? <laughs> what, what, what about middleweight champion? Israel the same. Walter White. Yeah, yeah, fuck him. But who's who's the Walter White champion? Fuck him. De uh, Usman. Newsman. Who's the welterweight champion of karate combat? Do they have a welterweight champion? Who's the heavyweight champion of karate combat? Division? Yeah, I don't even think they have heavyweight. <laughs> Who's the fucking middleweight champion of karate combat? Uh, uh, that guy. Oh, that dude. Yeah. Yeah, that nigga's my yeah, That, <laughs> that nigga, guy is yeah, that other dude. Yeah, that nigga's my favorite. I'll... Yeah. <laughs> I know who the lightweight champion is. You tell. Featherweight. Get a scribes, an MMA fighter. <laughs> you see the point. That That's all I know. But do you see the point oh, that I'm no. getting at? We can name off champions and in, in other organizations with ease. I, I I couldn't name off any fucking champions in fucking karate combat. I just found out they had belts. They do. Yeah, they got championship belts. I didn't even know that. And I've never seen where... a championship fight for them, so yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. yeah, they got championship belts, and then champions wear a different color a gi belt. Yep. So they're no longer black belts, they're purple belts? 
I mean, there's something, some shit. I don't know. Yeah. I want a kaleidoscope belt. I want a gold belt if I fight for this, then. I want a rainbow belt. I'm trying to get that <laughs> rainbow belt from, uh, what was that fucking Jesse Eisenberg movie? Uh, the Art of Self-Defense. Yeah, I want that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, actually a perfect segue. With that being said, gentlemen, I think we have pretty much shit on, or I shouldn't say shit on, but I think we have voiced our concerns and views and beliefs in regards to karate combat as much as we can. Lobo, after the break, sir, are you ready to synopsize this evening's return? Of our craptacular karate flick, 1990, whatever the fuck ever, Desert Kickboxer. You ready for this after the break, sir? And now, our feature presentation. <laughs> Floor is yours, sir. So, Desert Kickboxer Pale Warrior is a story of a Native American drug buster in the middle of the, I don't know, era. In a desert. We're never told where this guy's at. We're really not. No, we're not told. He's supposed to be Native American. We never find out what tribe he's supposed to belong to. And he's a white guy. <laughs> 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 the whole plot of this movie really starts 20 minutes in when we find out a girl steals millions of dollars from a drug cartel, <laughs> leaves a guy behind to get the shit kicked out of him, and then runs through the desert with her simple-minded brother. And that's the bulk of the plot in an hour. You were still on it, Oh, sir. man, this movie was hard to get through. Oh, this movie was fucking dog shit. Fuck this whole movie. Fuck this movie from beginning Dude, this movie is end. literally 15 minutes of plot in an hour and 20 minutes. Dude, this, they should have just renamed this entire movie White Hope in the Desert. Like, that's, that's what they should have named this shit as. This fucking dude is white as snow. It's supposed to be a Native American tribe unheard of what type hey, of native hey, american hey, unheard, yeah, unheard of hmm? it was mixed it was mixed <laughs> was he oh yeah they do bring that up in the movie there's yeah. one scene in this where you see a picture of his dad his mom and he doesn't talk about his mom at all it's like your mom doesn't look native american dude man and they just glances up and that's it first off i have so many issues with this fucking movie especially in the beginning this motherfucker is getting his ass worked in a kickboxing match. And then, because he gets spit on, <laughs> this fucking guy does some type of jump, was it jumping crescent kick or some shit? And yeah. kills a man. And then he hangs the gloves up to never fight again. To where he then goes into law enforcement, busting drug dealers. Fighting drug hunters. In, in, an, in an unknown desert. Living out of a also trailer. all the drug runners are just having to be five minutes from his house. His trailer, which also apparently doubles for the fucking police station. Where was where was he going to arrest anybody and take them to? He, yeah, he just kind of sits there while the world's least racist backwood sheriff comes in and picks him up. <laughs> like he just sits there and waits. Like it's like I'm not doing this anymore, man. I'm not risking my life for pot dealers. Oh my god, Frisky Dingo, did you have a chance to watch this uh, piece of cinematic uh, gold? I did, and I regret every single minute. <laughs> the moment that got me the most, well, first, especially brother, is she supposed to be Mexican, Native American, and then the brother was white. <laughs> and, me, yeah. <laughs> and did the brother have like mental issues, or was he supposed to be pretending to be? That confused me. And then the scene where he was doing Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off at the top of the cliff, <laughs> and did that long pan out shot that felt like it would never end. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is straight dog shit. Um, a racially ambiguous protagonist who's white as snow. Um. We'll pretend that he's <laughs> half mixed Native American. That apparently everybody knows that he's part Native American because everyone he encounters reminds him. They don't even say it like that. They're just like, oh, you're Native American and you're white? Wow. This, the whole plot of this movie is motivated because a, a woman stole billions of dollars from a drug cartel. 
and gets away with it in the end. It, yeah. What would you guys think about the fight scenes in this movie? Because uh, I, I have some reservations in regards to the, uh, the, the the main bad guy's fucking henchman or whatever the fuck he is. Uh, I, lo- okay. I personally enjoyed the karate kata in the desert for no reason. For no reason! <laughs> I just got shot in the head. My This girl got kidnapped. Better do some kata. Time for me to kata, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, at least three days had to pass in between these events. Yeah, because I'm like, why is she not dead yet? <laughs> that, that was my... <laughs> That was my... I thought exactly. <laughs> they fucking waited for this dude to show up and then threatened to kill her. Why don't you just off this bitch when you had the chance? Get your money back, shoot her in the head, throw her in the desert. That's exactly. standard procedure for this. Why are you going to give him motivation then to train? Hey, it's an 80s movie. Do not let the fighter train for three days. Come back and kill y'all. Why was the training montage at the end of the movie? I I didn't understand the... The blonde kickboxer guy who, um... I can explain him. Just, well, that and just breaking out splits in the desert sand for, like, no reason. So this man is down, damn near ass up. <laughs> and... He's like, now's a good time to show you my flexibility, bitch. Yeah. Go ahead Isn't his on. boss dead at that point, too? Yes! There's actually no reason for him to even continue this. Right. So what's the point? <laughs> okay, this work. All right, you know what? There's no point even fighting. The head guy's dead. There's no money. Let's just go ahead and be out. But no, I fight because I like to fight and beat people up. I was kicked out of combat sports for life for hurting somebody in the ring. Oh, he didn't kill anybody like the head, like the main character, though. Yeah, I don't even know did. his fucking name. Yeah, exactly. He, did, he didn't kill name. anybody. Uh, it's Joe High Hawk. It's Hawk, yeah. Hawk. I just know he played in fucking Merrow's place. Exactly. Oh, I was like, <laughs> played in guys. you, you yeah, and I were the, the only ones that were gonna recognize that dude from Melrose Place. Yeah, because I remember because I was like, damn, he kind of favored like uh, a mixture of John Travolta and somebody else. Like, Rob Estes. <laughs> like, this, yeah, this movie was trash. This movie was pure dog shit. The fight scenes were ass. Man, fuck this entire movie. So, Frisky yeah. Dingo. When it comes to our craptacular karate films, we like to give these movies up to a zero to five star rating. Zero being that this was the most worst piece of shit you've ever seen in your life. Up to a five, meaning it is the most craptacular kick to the balls with cinematic greatness that you've ever seen in your entire life. If you had to rate this from zero to five, how would you rate this, um, this gem here? Known as Desert Kickboxer. I don't think I'm alone in saying this, but this was a big fat zero. <laughs> <laughs> big fat zero. Was, I will never watch this movie again. I wasted I, what was it was an hour and nineteen or twenty minutes of my life. That's an hour and twenty minutes that you're never getting back, sir. <laughs> yeah, never, get, never getting back, man. I could. Imagine how I feel. I have to watch these movies. I would That's rather true. have gone to Outback and drunk a Foster's beer from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it is. Oh, God. Ah, Lobo. <laughs> Scale of 0 to 5, how do you rate this? <laughs> Rated a 0, I'm never watching this again. Mm, all right, I'm seeing the trend. Justice! This shit goes in the toilet. This is... I mean... <laughs> I, I just want to forget about this. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. But if, like, you, if you had to put a, a a numeric spin on it, how how how? how would no, you it's a damn zero. It, it's a zero. <laughs> like I just want to wipe this from existence. I see. Deku, bad enough to do this. Did you get a chance to watch this piece of shit, Deku? Well, I had the intentions of watching it, but you I saw that. a title. Uh huh. <laughs> and um, I went to sleep. <laughs> That's not even the original title of the movie. Wait, what? I saw Desert Kickbox, and I was like, "What is like Desert Fox?" Did you say Deku? I said I, I saw on the link. I said Desert Kickboxer or Kickboxing, and I was like, "I'm gonna turn the shit on and go right to sleep." <laughs> Respect that. So that's definitely a zero from Deku. Yeah. 
uh, for myself, I'm gonna have to go ahead and, and and join the crowd on this one. This is a this is a definite zero. This is probably one of the worst piles of shit we have ever watched on this show. I'm actually almost hard pressed to find a movie that we've watched and reviewed that's even worse than this. Even without the uh, the prison rape and all that shit and the little billies getting their assholes torn out, those films were even better than this. Frisky Dingo, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but uh, the first half of the movies we watched, for reasons completely unknown, uh, because my memory sucks, I'm picking these movies, and uh, they all just start off with like some type of prison rape. But, uh, you know, not this one, though. So, you know, welcome to the show. Hey, when I first ever came to the States, especially every time, I watched, watched that movie Deliverance. Good Lord. And I thought every single person from here was like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! That that was your first thoughts of America. Yep, yep. So, out of, out of curiosity, if you had to watch one or the other, would you rather watch this or would you rather watch Deliverance? Knowing what you know now, the tough one. Is it though? I'd rather go to Outback and bring the <laughs> that, that. Oh fuck! Yeah, this is this is a steaming pile of shit, and um, we're never watching this piece of shit again. And I'm going to enjoy listening to justice attempt to give us and bring us the technique of the day improve your skills son harden your body become the number one man do not ever let anyone beat you all right so technique of the day is um, the bad guy in the movie. After you kick the shit out of the protagonist, <laughs> and he's down on all fours with his ass up, you're gonna <laughs> go behind him, take your jacket off, you're gonna do the Van Damme split, and grind on the sand. What does this do to the individual in front of you? Nothing at all. Except makes them feel weird, and maybe pucker their butthole. I'm thinking they're gonna get raped. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Jesus Christ, man! Oh my god! So yeah, didn't think of the day. Oh. oh, oh god! Okay. Ooh. Um. Fuck. <laughs> right the across the sand. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, oh my God! Well, you're on you're on such a roll, sir. Why don't you be, be so kind as to take us back down memory lane? Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. All right. Um, I don't really have an organization, but uh, it's Black History Month. We want to go back. Karate, of course. That was the basis of the show for Karate Combat. But go look at some old ISK kickboxing. It's a Black History Month again. I name off a couple of people, you know, that uh, you might want to look up that did a lot of good things. Manson Gibson. Uh, we talked about him before, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham, and also Johnny 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 uh, Davis. He really led the way for you know black fighters. They did karate, so they had black belts, and they held it down. Then Johnny Davis did beat Mike Wingle John, um, the coach, former coach of John Jones. People know Jackson Wink. He did whoop his ass. Got knocked out next fight. All the ISK ISKA um, champions, um, you know, Ken Husky, people like that, uh, you know, they 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 held it down. They put on for karate. This karate combat bullshit is an insult. That was very well said. As always, great fucking show as usual. Deku, Lobo, <laughs> black man from Dagestan, and of course, the newly joined member, 
the Frisky Dingo himself, a.k.a. Dildo Swaggin 69. Gentlemen, excellent job. Be sure to listen, like, share, and subscribe for the latest episodes, news, and updates. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Podcast or at thl.muaytai. On Twitter, follow us at hl underscore fight talk. Thank you.